everyone, hope you're doing well. I just wanna jump on and share some thoughts with you guys today. I shared a word earlier, just well, a short word about the changing of the guard. And I wanna just jump in and share a few thoughts about that, what I believe God is doing right now. I feel like some people on here as well, you're in this changing of the guard shift. You're in this place where you're feeling even an internal shifting taking place. And I feel the spirit of the Lord today wants to quicken that within you. And he wants to just, he wants to highlight that. He wants to reveal that. He wants to bring it to the surface and he wants to, he wants to bring you into your best days. He wants to bring you into your voice. He wants to He wants to bring you into that mantle that you're called to wear. You've been through a lot of delay. You've been through so much opposition for what you carry. And the Lord today just wants to encourage you to step into that in this moment of time. We're in a Kairos moment where the Lord is bringing the church into a fulfillment of a of an era of a time and we're about to embark into a new season where it feels like the Lord the Lord is highlighting the church as an active bride a warrior bride and so I want to talk about the changing of the guard for a minute okay so hopefully this blesses you guys Holy Spirit I just pray that you would just come and you would pour out your spirit over these people that you would just arrest the hearts of those who just need to receive what you're pouring out today. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now. I want to share this with you guys. Um, you know, when we speak about the changing of the guard, I feel like it has been a bit of a cliche thing in the church, uh, in the charismatic church, we talk about the changing of the guard. And a lot of the times it's kind of been used with a negative connotation. I want to speak about it today uh, from a few different angles. Um, but really the changing of the guard has been this, this kind of term that the Lord's been speaking to me about for probably around about four months now. Um, but just a few nights ago, the Lord really drove it home to me. And I had a dream where I was hovering over the United States and I was, uh, I was in travail and I was interceding over the United States and I was just, I was just praying and like I was brooding. And I think sometimes when I have a dream like that, maybe it's not me, it's uh, I'm, I'm sensing what the Holy Spirit's doing, you know what I mean? And I'm, uh, there's this brooding taking place over the United States. And I know this is for the world as well. This is for every country. So receive this. But um, I was in this place where I was just um, brooding over the, over the United States. And um, I, was, I was like, what is going on? What, like, what am I meant to be seeing? And I, I begin to descend down into different cities and regions. And I sensed three different things that were taking place. Okay, the first thing that I sensed in some cities was where there was there was a battle that was waging between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness and it was really intense but the people of God in those places were contending and they were fighting and they were stewarding well what God had given them and it was amazing and then I went into another city and it was like um, the, these these regions were like closed up and I, I, it was almost like keys were unused and they were not stewarded well by the people that God had sent to these places. And it was like, wow, this has not been stewarded well. And it was, it was just, it was hard to kind of, it was hard to kind of see that. It felt like, wow, these, these regions are closed up because the body of Christ are asleep in those places, you know. And then I saw a third thing. And the third thing was, it was past the warfare. It was past the contending. There were places that were ripe. And it wasn't just like revival that was pouring out. There was harvest and it was like the Lord was just like, that place is ready. That place is ready. That place is ready. It was so powerful to see. And um, then the, the it wasn't spoken, but I, I just heard it in my spirit. Like it was just, you know, it's just like a knowing. And I just kept hearing like the changing of the God is upon us. The changing of the God. And um, I, I woke up and I'm kind of processing this with the Lord, you know. And uh, I hear God through movies and, and different things like that. And I'm a bit of a sci-fi nerd and God was just speaking to me about this. And the scene from uh, Lord of the Rings, the first one, the Fellowship of the Ring came up and it's where, you know, Boromir, who's a part of the fellowship, he tries to steal the ring from Frodo, right? And uh, he couldn't, like he thought that, you know, if he took it for Gondor, then it'd be great. He could use it and it'd apparently be a, a great way to win battles and wars. And, he, you know, he thought it was a noble thing to, to take the ring from Frodo. But Frodo had the purity of heart to be able to actually steward the ring. And the Lord's speaking to me about this. And I go a little bit deeper in my process. I'm thinking about in the second uh, installment of the movie where, uh, you know, Boromir's father 
who's the steward of Gondor, he's in a place where he's usurped power to be in that place and he's not stewarding it well. And when Gandalf comes to say, hey, you've got a war on your doorstep, he doesn't pick up that charge. He's like, no, I'm, I know better than you. And he's all sad and he's in grief because of his son dying and everything like that. And the Lord just spoke to me. He was just like, wow, like we're in a changing of the guard right now because, because we need to see we need to see those who have the purity of heart carry, carry those keys for those regions to unlock them for the kingdom of God, where there's been stewards in places that have not properly stewarded what they've been given. Okay, this is heavy, I know, I know, but I feel this so strongly. And this isn't to, to dishonor anybody. This isn't to dishonor those who have been in those places. This is just more of, okay, the Lord is giving the keys to those who have the purity of heart that will unlock those places. And so I know that that is what is taking place right now. Um, I'm just going to read the scripture to you. Um, you know, in, in, jo- sorry, in 1 Samuel 16, we see Samuel come and find David. Well, let me just read it to you. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul since I've rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I've chosen one of his sons to be king. And we, this is, this is crazy because I I feel the Lord saying this to the church right now. How long will you mourn for Saul? How long will you mourn for Saul? Like why are we continually Mourning for that which has expired and passed and that which does not carry anointing or power to lead the church forward. Why do we keep mourning Saul? Why do we keep mourning the the thing that has not properly stewarded what God has given? Man, I feel just, I've been feeling both the weight and the grief of this on the Lord's heart. Like, why do we keep mourning Saul? We don't dishonor. David never dishonored Saul. He had the money. He could have. He could have cut. Like, so he could have killed Saul, but instead, he just cut a part of his his cloak. And I, I just feel like in this hour, we don't dishonor. We don't dishonor what hasn't properly stewarded those regions and cities. But we must now pick up the key. We must now say, okay, I need to step in. You know, not again usurping some place of power, or authority. But when the Lord has said, "This is who I've called you to be." We need to step into those places. Let me just read this now. Let me just read this. And this this is what it comes down to. You know the scripture really well. Okay. The Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height for I've rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. We know that he anointed, we know that he anointed David. This, you know, kid who was tending sheep who was the least likely to be king yet he carried the heart of God and the Lord is raising up a Davidic generation right now the days of the Saul church has come to an end the empires have been falling it's not to dishonor we can see where they've served their purpose but where the enemy has tainted and poisoned those places and those movements. In the midst of that, the Davids must arise and build that which is pure and which is holy unto the Lord so that the church can be the voice that she's called to be in this hour. That's why there's been such a pulling away and there's still going to be such a pulling away from just old methods and old ways of doing things and just, you know, just the ministry career track is just it's so dead and and done you know uh it's just not even interesting to me at all in any way it has no appeal it is it, you know it's just so many elements to you know this soulish governmental hierarchy in the church is uh is coming it's been coming to an end and the lord is saying to the davids like rise up rise up right now and begin to develop my governance and my kingdom, establish my tabernacle. And in that place, the Lord is going to raise up a church that has a voice for the times that we're living in. If you think, and this isn't to put any fear out there, but if you think what happened in 2020 um, exposed to the real church were 
and who, who was in it for games. You wait to see what happens in the days to come. If we're not bold now, if we're not in that place now, how are we ever expected to be the true, pure and holy bride? We're all being tested. This is, I'm not pointing any fingers, man. I do not want to be in that place. We all need to be living holy lives right now. Anyway, I want to move on from that. Um, you know, when, when Samuel anointed David, it marked the end of Saul's reign. I want to point out something which is really interesting. There are many, you know, Saul, when he disobeyed God, he went through a season where he was tormented by the enemy. He was tormented by Satan. And there are so many that have not, this is where we need to apply grace. Uh, so many leaders that have disobeyed God and have not stewarded what God has given them are in a tormenting season right now. They won't, tell, they won't tell you this, but they're being tormented by the enemy. God can turn their hearts and they can be used mightily in this next move of God. We don't need to go up, oh, they're done. They've, they've, they haven't stewarded what God's given them properly. No, pray for them. Go and like bring deliverance to them. They are being tormented like Saul is being tormented, okay? It's difficult because it's for many of you, it's the people that have been souls to you, literally in the natural. Uh, but the Lord wants us to apply grace to them and honor to them. I'm telling you something, honor is currency right now. Honor those people. But you know what? Don't let that honor be some kind of weird, strange loyalty where you don't step into the calling of God upon your life because you're worried about not being loving or not appeasing people, you know, that kind of stuff. We need, we need right now to step into what God has called us to step into. You know, and it's, it's similar to when, let me read this. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, assistant, Moses, my servant is now dead. Therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people into the land I'm giving them to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I've given to you just as I promised Moses from the wilderness of this Lebanon, as far as the great river, Euphrates and all the land of the Hittites. And it goes on. This is what the Lord spoke to me about regarding the change of the guard. You know, Joshua, Moses could only go as far as the border of Canaan, but Joshua was authorized and anointed to take them into their promised land. The changing of the guard is necessary strategically and spiritually because it's not just about a role change. It's not just about shifting up the roster. That's not what the changing of the guard is. It's about, it's about activating a people that are authorized and anointed to usher the church into their inheritance. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's about a people that are anointed to usher the church into her inheritance. Moses was not anointed or authorized to bring the church into the body of Christ, sorry, the Israelites into her inheritance. And there are certain leaders and there's certain people and there are certain movements that are not authorized or anointed because they have made that decision. They're not authorized to bring the church into their inheritance. But let me say this very clearly. There are many in this hour that have not even stepped into their position like Joshua, but the Lord is calling upon you right now because you have been authorized and anointed to bring the church into her inheritance. But will you do that? Will you step out of the defeat and the and all the pain you've been in because you've been in a soulish environment for so long and that's all you've known? Will you allow the Lord to bring healing and deliverance to you so that you can be the deliverer and bring the church into that new paradigm? Will you do that? That's the question right now. The Lord is confronting in your heart. And even as I'm speaking this right now, you're feeling, you're feeling the pull of the Holy Spirit. And he, he really is tugging on your heart. And it's like, God, but I've been through so much. I've had the javelins thrown at me time after time. I don't know if I have this in me, but the Lord is saying, it is time to leave that in Egypt. It's time to leave that. You know, Joshua, the Lord instructed Joshua in, in Joshua 4 or 5, come on which one, he instructed him to circumcise all the men of Israel because they had to get that thinking out of their mind. And, you know, right now the Lord has been doing that in all of us. He's just the fire in the refinery. I think Charlie Sham had an amazing word today about a dream about, you know, those who, those who come out the other side of this refinery, you know, 
They're the ones that, that God's saying, hey, they, they, they've passed through. There's testing taking place right now on all levels. There is testing taking place in leaders all around the all around the world as he's like testing them. Will they properly steward what I've given them or will they fall prey to this religious territorial machine that, you know, which is it? Will they fall prey to being like the sort? See, there is, see, if you, you haven't been in a higher place of authority, you would know what kind of stuff people get bombarded with. These leaders get bombarded. The enemy is constantly at them, luring them into this place of insecurity where they will then step into being a soul. But the Lord wants us on all levels to be pure hearted and to have a heart after his own heart. He wants us to be open handed with the calling that we have, that we're not this is me, this is my role, this is my title, respect me, honor me. And we need to be in this place where we're just pure hearted before the Lord and it's about worship. What did David do? David brought a new covenant paradigm into an old covenant context. Worship before David was about sacrifice. It was in that continued. But David, he brought worship. He brought dancing before the Lord into an old covenant context. So what David did was he he taught the the Israelites how to worship unto God and how to be priests and minister to God and we need to have that heart for where we're going because we don't have that David heart where we're going we're going to miss God we're going to see even even persecution can be worship can I tell you a key in my life that has been such a breaker when I go through hell when I go through stuff And when I go through disappointment, when I see promises not coming to pass in my life or something just disastrous happen. About a month ago, we had something happen that was just, it it was a crushing moment. Okay. And I, I'm not telling you this to say, wow, you know, that's amazing that you did that. This was a moment where I just was like, I have to make this a worship. I have to let this be a worship because if I don't, it will kill me. If we do this as a worship, if we do this with the heart of David, we're not going to do this in performance. We're not going to do this in reputation. We're not going to do this for another, you know, another little mark on our, this is what we've done for the kingdom. We'll do this from a place of worship. That's what the Lord is leading us into right now as we cross over a threshold in this hour, in this season, the Lord is looking for who emerges. Not with something to prove, but He's looking for a people that are on their knees before Him saying, God, whatever way you want to use me, here I am. They're not, God, I'm telling you something, the know-it-all thing, God is looking for people that don't care about what they know. People that sometimes know nothing, but they're just clothed by the Spirit of God and they're used in extraordinary ways. God, I put my hand up for that. Sometimes God will use you the most when you are the least qualified for it. God will use you the most when you have your ducks are all messed up. They're not even together and He would just put his anointing on you and he empowers you and authorizes you to be that which other people forfeited by trying to be something in their own strength. The changing of the God is about being so vulnerable before him. It's the deepest place of surrender that you could possibly have. And even as I'm speaking this right now, I feel the Lord there's a deep cause unto deep thing taking place right now. There's someone on here, maybe many of you feel it. Like I'm not sure if you're feeling this. You're feeling like there's a deep grief that is lifting off some people right now. There's some people right now, there's hope deferred lifting off you. It's almost like you've been in this place of waiting. You've been in this place where it's almost like I just pinpointed what you feel a longing and a craving for God, use me. I've been trying to get my ducks in a row. I've been trying to get myself sorted out. The Lord's like, stop today and simply say yes. Simply surrender to me. Simply say yes to what I'm moving you into. 
yeah, God's just lifting off deep grief and soul sickness of so many people that have been trying to get everything sorted and, and trying to be something and trying stop and surrender. And Jesus, we say yes. The Psalm 24 anointing is a commissioning. Can I read this over you? I didn't prepare for this, but let me just pull up Psalm 24. I'm going to read it. Let me just read this from Ashley. Yeah. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation who seek him, who seek your face. What is the Lord saying? It's like, that counts me out. I'm not pure God. That counts me out. My ways have not been perfect. The Lord is not saying that to you today. He's saying, will you say yes to the call? Will you say yes to ascend the hill of the Lord? Will you say yes to the process of having your hands clean and your heart pure? Because if you say yes, he will lead you on a journey out of so much mess that you've been tangled up in. I feel like today the Lord is burning off those cycles of addiction and oppression that have been coming over you. The Lord is delivering you from so much that has been hanging on to you. I feel like there is a python spirit. Someone's even around their neck. It's being, you're being delivered of that right now in the name of Jesus. It's just been coiled around you. It's been choking your voice. It's been stopping you from entering into the true and pure calling upon your life. And the Lord is delivering you of that right now in Jesus' mighty name. If you say yes to the calling of David, the calling of the pure, the Lord will lead you out of so much that you've been trying in your own strength to do. The Lord is saying today, if you want to be untangled from every single weapon that the enemy has tried to place around you, every trap, simply say, God, lead me. God, lead me out of this. Give me clean hands and a pure heart. Lead me on the pathway of holiness. And you watch what He's going to do through your life. God's looking for the pure of heart in this hour. They can entrust with the keys for regions and cities and for nations. Cities, regions and nations. And this is how God will use you. He says to you today, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. And who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, as the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And the Lord is saying over you today, it is time to step into your place. You cannot forfeit it another day longer. You cannot abdicate from that which I've called you since the beginning of time, says the Lord, for I have marked you and I have called you for this moment and for this hour. And now watch as the waiting comes to an end, says the Lord, for you've been on the sidelines waiting for a moment of time in history that I would call you for this. In the last few years, I've been readying you and you've been impatient because you've known that there's something stirring. But now watch as that which has felt like has been a theoretical um, possibility becomes mortar under your feet. The Lord says, for I am calling you into a place of stepping into that calling. Yes, you will get your hands dirty. Yes, you will step into this place physically. It will manifest before you. Even right now, I'm beginning to connect and align things that you would step into that place. For when the key enters into your hands and you feel the oil dripping over your head like David, that marks your moment that you leave the wilderness, says the Lord, and you are suddenly ushered before kings to take out that which you were only anointed and authorized to take out. For many have tried and they've failed. Many have tried and it has not happened for them. But you 
I've authorised and I've anointed for this moment, says the Lord. I've authorised you. There are giants with your name on them and it is time for you to stop hiding from them and stop lying to yourself that you are not ready for it. For my spirit is upon you. Your heart is ready. Your heart is pure. And the Lord says to you today, get ready for the changing of the guard because it is for you. It is what is taking place over you. And there are ministries here watching today and you've been in a standstill. I'm not sure who you are. There's been confusion. I even see there's been breakdowns of relationships in ministries and in synergy and in, in some of these relationships. And you're like, what is going on? It feels like my vision has even been stolen. The Lord's saying, get ready for fresh vision to be poured out for this. Part of it has been ordained by God. The enemy has been warring at those relationships. But the vision has had to come to zero so the fresh could come. For the Lord is resetting some of your purpose and the things you've been speaking about and the message you've been carrying, get ready to watch it be uh, refreshed, says the Lord. I'm giving you fresh vision for the days to come. There are apostolic ministries that are right now rising up and they're rising up to begin to take authority in regions. And the Lord says you will enter into places where none have been able to go before. They've been kicked out. The principalities and the regions have kicked them out and they're running. They've run with their, their tail between their legs. But you will go in those places and you will tear down the idols and you will evict the principalities and you will step into those places. The Lord says, worshipers, rise up in this hour. We need your sound. We need your sound to go forth, says the Lord. Worshipers, rise up. There are about four or five worshipers that are on here, even watching live right now. And the Lord says, begin to lift your voices, mighty ones, for you've been sitting and waiting for your moment. Now let the songs come forth. Now let the songs come forth. Begin to sing aloud. Begin to cry aloud in the streets. The Lord says, there's breakthrough. There's breakthrough, just as David as he worshiped before Saul and the demonic spirits left, as you worship in this, in this hour, it'll be the soundtrack of deliverance for the church to come out of her bonds and out of the religious spirit that has been wrapped around her and coiled like a snake. And you will lift it off her and you'll usher in breakthrough on the front of the church as they come into new cities and break through the hard ground, says the Lord. It's time, it's time, it's time for the church to leave her rags behind it's time for the church to step into her general outfit once again and to lead the earth where we've been a laughing stock and where we've been looked at as weak, divided. The Lord says, you will unite the church and she shall become one sound yet again for she is shaking off her isms and she's shaking off her dysfunctions. And every single demonic spirit that's been keeping her in bondage and keeping her divided and separate is leaving now in Jesus mighty name Proshara masito rama si ke ara nama so proto se manda lambia ando sebre mi ando sha basia to sambra no ma se hay alamba hay alama sha to sebre nanda na mesia to shaka be sara dara na mo so proto sa kashi mi anda sebre mando ma se ando kuma so kai Lord I pray you bring Conviction upon leaders around the world, God. Holy conviction to make the necessary shifts internally and externally that you've been leading them to. You're tugging on the hearts of, of your leaders, God, around the world. They wouldn't have to hand the keys to others. They would continue to fight the good fight. They would stand up for justice. They won't fall prey to culture. They won't fall prey to the spirit of this age. They won't compromise or be compliant with evil. God, but they would be a pure and holy bride. For the marker of this changing of the guard is choose this day whom you will serve. Choose this day whom you will serve. And Lord, we are a people that say yes to what you're doing, what you're pouring out. And we serve no other God but Yahweh. Man, people are getting delivered. People are getting delivered right now. Who's feeling things lifting off them? I want to see. Who's like, who's like feeling, th who felt the thing uncoil? I want to hear from you guys. Something, something's taking place. Yeah. I want to hear from you guys. What happened? Someone getting delivered of even addictions right now. I'm not sure who's had uh, 
painkiller addiction, but it's a, um, you maybe don't want to call it that and that's okay, I, I get it, but there's just been, it's been a little bit worrying to you, a bit unhealthy. Whew. Shannon Suttles, the Lord says to you, get ready for the shift that's coming over you guys. Get ready for the shift coming over you guys. I just see you guys standing. Uh, you've been in like a, like, a, like a front of battle. And you've been, I, f- I saw like a desk and you're operating your ministry out of this desk in the front in one of the, the trenches. And the Lord says, you've, you've been through years of doing ministry from the trenches. But the Lord says, I'm now taking you to the watchtower. Show the watchtower, says the Lord, for you need to, you'll move your desk you're shifting from the from the the trenches to the watchtower says the lord for i'm establishing you i'm establishing you as watchmen for this hour and you've known your season of battle but that season of battling from that place has had to shift and you've had to now move and the lord is taking you there and even this transitionary season you've been in has been uncomfortable and you've even said god what is going on the lord's now moving you into that place in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Shamando, Sambatosha. I feel the sweet presence of God. It's like a sweetness. It's just like, you know, you know what? It feels like the balm of the Lord. So I know He's healing. I know it's like it's deliverance right now, but it's also the tenderness of God. He's so tender as He leads us. And so He's, he's tenderly saying, hey, <laughs> He's tenderly just, oh, Michelle or Rico. Wow. Prophesy. 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 Keep prophesying. But Lord, I've already prophesied. I've continued to prophesy. I've been faithful to prophesy. Prophesy, prophet. Prophesy, prophet. For you've not even seen the effect of your yes in this past season. But in this, you shall see it. You shall see it come to pass. You shall see the fruit of your yes. Shake it off, Michelle, and prophesy. But now it's time to be bold. It's time to now prophesy nations, says the Lord. Yeah. He is so tender though, DJ. He's so tender. Like, oh, I can't even explain just how tender he's been to me this year. Man. He's so beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you, Lord. Um, I'm so aware that we, when we talk about the changing of the guard, I'm just so aware that like, um, we say yes because we're following him. You know, we say yes because it's, we have nothing else in our sights. <laughs> we have no other interest in anything except just Jesus where are you going okay I'm gonna I'm gonna align with that you know we've been in a season our family's been in a season of that we've been in a season where we've just had to say yes to redirecting saying yes to (laughs) saying yes to saying no to a lot of things um and just uh redefining what ministry really looks like with our girls with our family we're here in America we love it we love being in America, um, but we don't just want to do the same old thing. We want to do what he's called us to do. And uh, I know that many of you right now are in that place as well. And that's okay. Sometimes not knowing anything is one of the best gifts you can have when he's redirecting you and just surrendering to that process. You know, that's, that's been us. And I know that he's doing that all around the place. Um, the last thing I really want to mention on here, and I didn't really... It was just that the changing of the guard is the rising of defenders and midwives over their cities and nations. Just get ready for the Lord to begin to cause you to dream in ways you've never dreamt before. He really is bringing the church to a place of, uh, of, of us becoming watchmen on the walls and in a place, or probably in a way that we've not known before because we've only known the hustle and the fighting and in our own strength, but the Lord as we ascend the hill of the Lord, we're going to step out of our own strength. We're going to do it in rest. And that's what we're going to see right now, especially as America is leading into another election and things get crazy spiritually. Culture gets even more divided and everything gets nuts. We need to be a people that especially right now are grounded 
and we're rooted in what is the Lord saying. Otherwise, we're going to be thrown around by all the different fires and the different narratives that are going around the place. And so I just pray that you'd have discernment to see through the smoke and mirrors and you would not forfeit the call in this hour because it looks scary, because it looks big. You're a David. And there are, you're a David. You're a David. You're a David. You're a David. I've shared this in a few words before, but when the Lord is trying to get me out of a funk and I've been in a funk or I'm feeling defeated, I'm looking at something in the world and I'm feeling defeated about it, He says to me, David, pick up your harp. And uh, I know there are many other Davids around the world. That's all of us. I believe we're a Davidic generation, so it's all the body of Christ. But it always messes me up because I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been thinking my own strength again. And I get my guitar out and I just begin to just worship the Lord. And suddenly I step into victory and suddenly I step into that rest that I've been so longing for. The body of Christ is leaving the hustle We're entering our days where we're going to lift. We're going to be a bride that dances before the Lord and lifts up a victory cry because we're called to be overcomers, not underneath anymore. So if you are feeling like you've lost your peace and you've lost your rest in all of this and you're just feeling all just unsettled, pick up your heart, begin to release that cry that's on the inside. Maybe even do that right now before I get off the, the, this video. Is that okay for a minute? Just begin to pray in tongues, begin to speak out. I feel like the fire of the Lord wants to hit another, just a bunch more people that need deliverance to, you just need some healing. You need something to lift off you. You feel that on your spirit. You feel that like you may be sitting in the recess of your soul. Something needs to lift up. Begin to sing with me now. Begin to sing with me now. Just begin to release that cry for a minute. Begin to activate that, that, that Davidic cry on the inside of you. Even if it is a cry, lift it up to the Lord. Just begin to worship with me. Lord, we just, we worship you. We magnify your name, Jesus. Someone getting delivered right now. Someone's getting delivered right now. A tormenting spirit. A tormenting spirit is leaving right now. There's someone on here actually. And you would actually say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm on here just watching this, but I'm, I'm like a Wiccan or, or you'd call yourself a witch and there is no judgment. But the Lord is wanting to reveal himself to you today. He's wanting to reveal that he loves you. He's wanting to get you out of all that mess. And I, I see just the pain that entered you, that brought you into that environment. But the Lord wants you to encounter his presence now in the name of Jesus. He's setting you free of that spirit and the tormenting voices. Because if you are truly honest, you know that you go to sleep at night afraid. You're hearing those voices tormenting you. You feel the spirit of death and its clutches around your neck. And the Lord is delivering you of that right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you, Father, right now for those who've been far from you, Lord. Those who have not known your heart, those who have drifted from you. Well, Lord, we ask for them to come home in Jesus' mighty name. If you want to accept Jesus on here today, whether if you know Jesus or not, say, Jesus... I receive you today. Come into my life. Set me free. I repent for my sins. I want to be fiery on hot for you today. In love with you, Jesus, I need you in my life. Deliver me of every demon and every contract and every alignment I've made in my life that is not from you. Jesus, make me a new creation today. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Now, Holy Spirit, baptize me. Baptize me. Right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we just make you the Lord and Savior of our lives. God, we come into lordship with you today, Jesus. And we come out of lordship with any other gods and any, any other entity and any other anything else that we've been in lordship under that is not you. And Jesus, we just ask that you would fill us afresh in this hour. You'd baptize us in your fire.
That's the changing of the guard right now. It's the yes. It's the yes to where he's leading us. Do we stay put or do we say yes? For me, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going ahead. Whatever the cost, I'm moving forward with Jesus. I'm gonna leave it there. My goodness, I feel the fire all over me right now. Thank you, Jesus. Please let us know if there's any deliverance. I just I could just see there were people getting delivered. I saw like some tormenting, tormenting spirit. Who was the person? Yeah, no more idolatry. Good. Yeah, amen. Who was the person who felt something uncoil, like off their neck, their throat? Who was that person? Because the Lord told me who I mean, there's probably a few people. The Lord told me that were voices. We're going to be set free today. I'm not sure. This is strange. It's even going to change the sound of your voice. Change the sound of your voice. I'm not sure who this one particular person was. Like they're really restricted physically as well. Like it was a physical restriction. So oh, anyway, Jesus, we love you. Have an amazing day, guys. And uh, <laughs> yes, I will share this on, on YouTube. I'll try to get on here more regularly. Uh, we're running our remnant school. And we're loving that. It's awesome. And uh, kind of putting everything into that at the moment. Christy, is, I'll just do a bit of an update before I get off here. Christy and I are also involved with the uh, Million Women, uh, the Million Women Movement. Uh, Lou Engel and Jenny Donnelly are um, gathering a million women and men on the Washington DC Mall next October. So Christy's heavily involved, more than me, uh, with mobilizing for that. Um, I'm doing a little bit on the side, but mainly it's Christy with that. But we, uh, we're basically moving in a position to, to build a discipleship training center. Um, we're in this place, we're kind of kept a little bit hush just because it's, it's building. And you know, you wanna kind of keep a little bit quiet, but we're also uh, starting up a publishing company for people who can never get published because we wanna see God's wild, crazy ones be able to write their books and stuff. So a bunch of stuff going on behind the scenes that stops me from getting on here as much as I used to. Uh, we're still in a bit of, bit of transition as a family, but so appreciate all your prayers, all the people that sow into us and love on us. We just want to say thank you. It really means so much. I will try to get on here a little bit more though. Anyway, love you guys. Have an amazing day. Bye.